Many years ago, a colleague of mine asked if we could use .0 and .255 IP addresses for hosts. Of course not, I replied. They're special IPs that are always reserved for the network ID and the broadcast address. I was studying for my CCNA at the time, and I was feeling pretty confident in my answer. The only problem is, I was completely wrong. In fact, there are three different cases where this is quite possible, and I'm going to show you each of them. Some things seem obvious in hindsight, and this is one of those times. Usually, the first and last IP addresses in a subnet are reserved to be the network ID and the broadcast IP. No surprises there. And often, we use a slash 24 network as they're nice and easy. So in these cases, dot zero is the network ID and dot 255 is the broadcast IP. But what if we're not using a slash 24 network? What if we're using, say, slash 23? For example, we might be using 192.168.10.0 slash 23. The network ID then is 192.168.10.0 and the broadcast IP is 192.168.11.255. These are the first and last addresses in this subnet. So what about 192.168.10.255 and 192.168.11.0? Are they special in any way? No, they aren't. They are just regular host IPs. Don't believe me? Let's take a look. Here are two routers connected to each other. Naturally, we can't assign the network ID to the router. iOS blocks this from happening. But when we try 11.0, it's entirely happy. The same is true on the second router, where we can set it to 10.255. And, as for one final piece of proof, we can ping from one side to the other. But wait, we're not done yet. There's another way that this can happen. Have you ever heard of a slash 31 subnet mask? This allows for exactly two IP addresses. But if the first and last addresses are reserved, how can this work? A slash 31 network is the exception to this rule. There is no network ID and no broadcast IP. So on R1, we can set 102.168.10.0 with a slash 31 subnet mask. On R2, we can use dot one, the other IP in this subnet. And as we would expect, this works just fine. This type of addressing is only used on a point-to-point -point network where we don't really need broadcasts and network IDs. The last one is a bit of a cheat. On most network devices, we can configure loopback interfaces. These have a slash 32 address assigned to them, which can be any valid IP including .0 or .255. And that is the brief tale of the often misunderstood .0 and .255 addresses. I hope you found this interesting, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.